When you try your best but you don't succeed When you get what you want but not what you need Hi and welcome back to part 3 very last final video of my 3 part series on repairing the pool pump So where we left off in video 2 was we completely disassembled everything and now it's time to put everything back together uh, I got my two new bearings packages and I was also able to find uh, the four bolts and I will tell uh, these bearings uh, they cost me ten dollars I actually was able to find them for eight dollars afterwards go figure and um, believe it or not I actually saw where Ace Hardware carried these for about thirteen dollars you remember from video one I actually uh, broke the bolts and uh, broke these four long bolts that go throughout the uh, length of the case uh, I was told by uh, one pool expert that uh, needed to go and uh, I could find these anywhere at any uh, regular hardware store. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Um, I actually ended up having to go to a, a second uh, full pump store and they told me sure enough that they special ordered these from A.O. Smith, uh, the motor manufacturer themselves. So these bolts cost anywhere between one to two bucks um, each and uh, I was actually able to find one. Uh, it was Electromechanical Services uh, in Cocoa, Florida. So if anyone's around the Central Florida area, I strongly recommend those. Those guys are very uh, very knowledgeable about what they do and very nice customer service. So now what we're going to do is put everything back together. If you remember, and I already kind of put these on just to begin the, uh, begin the video, we had these two little snap rings. And that basically helps prevent, I guess, the bearing from slipping down further down the shaft. So I went ahead and put both of these on both sides. So what we're going to do first is I'm just going to, I'm going to work on this side of the bearing. And so really carefully on, the, on these, you can kind of see there's little notches. And there was a notch where these uh, where the shaft ring goes in, and there's a notch. And there's going to be a notch on the upper side of this half, and that's mainly where uh, some external ring will go on top and then go in place. So what I'm going to do first. I'm just going to work on this. Now, when we put the bearings on here, there's an outer race and an inner race, and uh, you don't want to damage you don't want to damage your brand new bearings that you just bought. So a lot of times we, what you have to do is you have to find some type of tool that fits on the inner race of this bearing and you can tap down such that it goes down smoothly and you don't damage the bearing. What I just ended up doing is I actually went to uh, Home Depot, found a uh, three, fourths, three quarters inch, about a three quarters inch PVC pipe, thin walled, and uh, that, seemed to work, that seemed to be about the perfect size for the uh, inner race. And that's all I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be hitting the top of this with the uh, rubber mallet to get this on. Now before we just slide this on and get it down, remember there are these two washers underneath. They're like paper thin. Okay, so I'll just put this one back underneath. And then what we're going to do now is we're ready to start tapping this bearing down. Alright, so I was able to get the uh, both bearings on and actually that uh, little PVC pipe tool worked beautifully. That was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. But I went ahead and put on the, uh, there's a little snap ring, a little external snap ring here that goes on top. And I don't know if you can see it very well. That was one of the ones that had been rusted off that I found a replacement for. Um, just know that, uh, you know, it's like a three quarter inch shaft. You had to go like one size lower, so that's about a five eighths inch uh, snap ring. So, you know, I said in part two that the, the bolts were going to be the uh, death of me. And uh, unfortunately, they were basically what kind of threw me underwater on this project. So somewhere Bob Vila is shaking his head at me and all the other do-it-yourself gods, but uh, what, what you see here is this is a new replacement end cap. Uh, there's a uh, like spapartshop.com that I found this on, uh, and before that I actually emailed A.O. Smith in a mad uh, mad rush to try to find a replacement because I wasn't about to hold by a new one once all the money I've invested in so far. So A.O. Smith, I do want to give them uh, props. They actually, uh, I wrote a big email to them trying to figure out where I could get something like this. They responded not only with uh, some suppliers, but they also responded with uh, and some part numbers, but they also responded with uh, some parts drawings. So I actually got the drawings of, of this thing, and I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I guess I'll go to China and uh, see if I can manufacture some cheaper ones for you all in the future in case you break yours. But uh, but just, just so you know, like Sayo Smith, uh, very good customer service in case you ever run into similar problems. But so. Now that I do have this, I can actually demonstrate the little lock nut function that uh, we, did, we weren't able to get to in uh, number two due to all the rust. As you can kind of see here, in, the, in part two, we were supposed to be able to turn this screw about a half a turn 
where we get it to this lock position here. And you can see where that little curve falls over. So the bearing's going to sit inside there, and this thing's going to turn, and it's going to go rest on its place. And then what you do, so what I'll have to do is I'll just have to unturn it, such that I have enough room to fit that bearing in. So got that in. We're all, uh, we're all locked, locked and ready to put this whole thing together now. So. Remember, there was this little bearing load spring that actually sat on the back of this, and that's going to rest right there when we put this whole thing together. And then once I put everything on, I'm going to attach, basically going to finally secure it with these four bolts. And what I'll end up doing is I've got some uh, Permatex anti-seize, and I'm just going to lubricate all the threads and stuff to hopefully prevent having to spend as much money as I have so far in the future. So, just set this down. All right, so I put it back to all together, uh, yay me, and uh, you can see what we have next is uh, let's put the governor on. So if you remember from uh, part two, the governor had uh, about three different pieces. We have the bracket, the weight, and then the two springs, and we just put them on in the reverse order that we got them. Now that we get the governor on, you, your first thought might be to uh, put the starter switch back on next. However, I want to uh, point out that uh, in video two, we have to uh, take this off in order to secure the shaft in order to take off the uh, impeller. So what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to install the seal plate in the impeller. And uh, and before we put the seal plate on with the four big bolts, remember, there were three washers that came on. This little rubber washer, followed by the metal washer, followed by the rubber washer they call the water slinger. Alright, so now I've got the, uh, got the seal plate on. And uh, those are big four bolts, about 9 sixteenths in socket in order to get those on. And last but not least, what I want to do is uh, secure the shaft with the uh, 7 sixteenths inch wrench. And what you're going to do, you're just going to be able to tighten this by hand. So now i got the impeller on. Take the, uh, take the wrench off. And now we're ready to install the, now we're ready to install the starter switch. And just remember when we do, when you get it adjusted, you want to make sure that this contact will be able to touch the, uh, the top of the weight of the governor. Alright, so I got the starter switch on, I got the impeller on, and then I went ahead and put on the, uh, the diffuser plate with the five screws there. Now, uh, I did say tighten the impeller by hand. Uh, you do got to tighten it pretty hard by hand. You got to have a strong hand enough to uh, get it down there enough such that the diffuser plate fits on properly. So. With that said, uh, we've now officially uh, reassembled our motor. Uh, this is a, uh, it's been a lot of work to get to this point. I'm pretty excited now. Uh, next time you see me, this thing should be hooked up to electricity and uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. So the motor's hooked back up to electricity and uh, at, at this point what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn the motor on, uh, just flip the, power, uh, flip the power back on and make sure everything turns on and, and it sounds good. Uh, I've already done that, but uh, I don't want to ruin the surprise. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue forth. Uh, the next thing we want to do is, so we got the motor down here. You remember from video number one, so we actually had to separate this. Part of that is there's this little O-ring in the middle. Now, this, this right here is at least a two-person job. It shouldn't be more than two, but uh, two people should be able to get the job. Because one thing is this O-ring's got to fit in here. You've got to be able to hold this in tight, and at the same time, the other person should be should be tightening this up and getting the getting the handle all tightened. And so, like I said, it's a it's a lot of work. I recommend two people. Um, probably shouldn't choose a spouse because this could lead to divorce. It's not a it's not a fun task, and one of you will be yelling at the other, blaming, and it's their fault that it's not working. So, I speak from experience in the process of signing the papers. Okay. One thing that does help, and uh, this thing actually sounds like it should be in your nightstand next to your bedroom. It's called a lube tube. And uh, what the loop tube does is uh, it basically seals the O-ring a little bit better. Most importantly for this job right here, when you lube up the uh, when you lube up the O-ring, you can actually get it to stick, such that someone doesn't have to quite hold it as you're trying to push everything together. So we're ready to prime the pull pump. I'm excited. This is the uh, moment of truth here. So when we talk about priming the pull pump, I watch a lot of videos on this, and uh, obviously I'm not a pull pump, but you know, they talk about 
shutting off valves for your main drain or leaving the skimmer ones open and re really what I've come to see what they're just trying to what they're really just trying to do is they're basically just like trying to shut your valves to a point such that your strainer basket here holds water and so what do I mean by that so I've got three points of exit where water can go to on this point so one thing you're going to want to do is before we start is really make note of the basically the positioning of your valves before we start this. Um, I believe this one actually goes out to my vacuum port. Um, I've got a robotic vacuum. One of these is a main drain and one of these is a skimmer. So if I have say this one open right which it is open right now this can actually water can drain out. So if I dump water into the strainer basket It'll go for a while, but then it'll immediately go back down. So the water immediately goes back down lower than the level of this because, frankly, this water has places to exit. So all that I really want to do is I want to shut this valve, basically this exit point off. I can't close off both exit points. But what I want to do is this one seems to be a lot less of a, an escape route. So I am going to go ahead and close off, close off this bigger one. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pour water in the strainer basket. As you can see, it's holding well. It's not dropping as bad. So it's going to drop a little bit because obviously it's still got some bit of an exit point here, but it's not going to drop as bad. And so now what we can do is we can put back our lid. Now what I'll do, seal it. I'm going to turn the, uh, I'm going to turn the pump on. And uh, at the same time as water starts actually flowing through, oh, make sure you got the uh, make sure you got the air closed on the uh, on the filter. I'll turn it on, and I'll slowly start returning these valves to their uh, to their normal positions. So let's see how the bearing replacement works, shall we? So we start getting water going. I'm going to open this up. Put this back to its upright position. And we're starting to see a little water come through there. So full disclosure, I promise, like I said, I tell you as an average noob just trying to do this for project yourself, um, everything about this, so uh, what are the cost of this? Just can't take your tears. I hate this part right here. So as you can see, uh, yeah, this is a uh, I lost. I lost big time. But um, most importantly, you know, hopefully I showed you the uh, basically the step-by-step -step process that gives you a little bit more in-depth. I know I've always had a problem. It seemed like a lot of people skip steps that were experts on this, and uh, and I hope that uh, I filled all those little extra steps in. So, um, hope you enjoyed my video. Like I said, please like or leave a comment. Uh, if you have any questions, anytime you need to find a part or something, I've learned a lot of this process. I'm more than willing to help. Uh, so, thanks and uh, have a good one. Lights will guide.